Hello! So, with the release of Score Spy, a lot more people are interested in learning how to path, or more specifically, how to memorize paths so you can then execute them and get a good score. And a lot of people, I find, get tripped up or scared off by the prospect of memorizing a path, when I don't think it's that bad, but part of the problem is just that a lot of people start off trying uh, methods that I find very inefficient. So I'm just going to go over what I do to memorize paths. And it may or may not work for you. Everyone's different. This is a inherently personal process, but I find, but hopefully going over this will help you have some ideas and improve your ability to memorize paths. So I'm just going to start by diving into example, which is best of both worlds from Antihero 1. It's a very simple path. It's only two activations. So fun fact, you can press select and then open file explorer and that'll bring up this window for most songs. Clone Hero won't always do it, but that's a Clone Hero bug, so don't complain to me. Um, and then you can just click and drag the notes file over to chopped. And then we draw image. Yeah, we'll overwrite. Okay, so you get the image up and what I see a lot of people do, especially on like, when they stream themselves learning paths, is they'll look at the image and go, okay, so well, we got this and they kind of just go, right, I guess I'll go there and they kind of stare at it for a minute and hope they'll just passively remember it and then they'll do it again for the next activation. And it turns out that Often to memorize things, you want to be engaging with the material you're memorizing. You don't want to just like passively read over it and hope it sticks in your head. So what often happens is they'll do the first activation and they'll have to pause mid-song and they'll have to look up the second activation. As you can imagine, this is even worse if I picked like a normal song and not one with two activations. It's just a mess. Please don't do this. So how would I go about this? Well, I so first off, I have paper by my side very important, specifically paper, and I have a pen or a pencil, some writing implement, and I will write down a summary of the path. Uh, and I find for me that specifically writing it down on paper rather than just having a notepad document by the side is very helpful in helping it stick. There's just something about the physical action of writing as opposed to typing that helps form an association in my brain with the process of making the summary and that association also helps me when it comes to remembering the path as I'm playing the song. But I'm not, I'm not going to write it here because you can't really see it. But I would do, oh well, I get two phrases and then I'd write two brackets one because I want to note that I'm doing an overlap and I would say go on, I would say next SP and then if I think it'll be a problem um, I might write like three RYB to na to note the end of the activation so I know what note I need to get a blue flame on at the end and then okay you get two and it's a two one again and then now you could just do 16 ryo but that's counting to a high number and i don't like counting to high numbers when i'm in the middle of the song because i'm busy playing the game so i'm quite liable to lose track so instead i look for ways to break it down so i go well it's the second ryo set so we can just cross those first eight off immediately and then i might i mean i would probably just write eight ryo in second ryo set um you might want to do it as like last ryo because the next note is a ybo you might want to say um like you have three beat like three and a half beats into it just come up with what works for you so it, on paper i would write something like this and then once I've actually got it written down, then I've engaged with the material enough that I can go on and play the song. And with a two activation song like this, I will probably just have it stuck in my head by then. But um, we should go over a slightly more intricate example. So we'll go over a song with 11 activations. Um, the GH1 chart of More Than a Feeling, specifically. So again, we'll make the path. And so each of these activations in turn, how would I memorize it? Well, first one is on the next note, so I would write NN. Again, you don't have, you don't have to come up with the same notation as me or use exactly my system. It's just it's all about coming up with a system that works for you because ultimately it's all about you trying to memorize it. You know, it, nobody else really needs to know it. But yeah, so you do two NN, and then I might write diamanding on the yellow sustain. I might not. Um, and then one, 
and then two R because I'm going second red, and then I would write R B to make sure that I know I have to end, I have to squeeze in that red blue. One, and again, I don't want to count all these yellows, so I would do um, two yellow after third orange sustain because I see these nice regular orange sustains. With other songs, you might have like a, a riff pattern in the repeat, and then you can just like refer to the pattern in some way that you'll know. And then one, and again, two R, R, B. The yellow means you don't whammy, so I would write like two, no whammy, go immediately, and don't whammy the GB until SP runs out. One, three, O, oops, one, one, three, O, non sustain, and might write ends on the blue sustain, and then two, and again, I don't want to have to count all these yellows, so you could do like two N in. Sixth yellow gallop because you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, or you could do two N after third trio of yellow orange chords, or you could do four yellow after third GY sustain, and then you know it ends in the yellow blue, and that's the last activation of the song. So I would have something like this written down on paper, but even doing this just after that, having seven activations on command is often not going to happen. So what I like to then do is I will divide it into chunks. Now, the chunks are somewhat arbitrary. I like to go for maybe three or four activations at a time at most. Um, and I like to look for patterns. Like, oh, all the activations are like this, go together. Or if this, if this type of activation happens every X act, then I'll split it into x so here i would focus on the fact that there's what there's two activations that are one two r r b so i would split that up and then you could just keep the four as it is or you can split it up into two chunks of two and so here you see you've got the second and fourth acts are the same and so then you just have to memorize this act this act and then this group of three and so then, once I've split it into chunks, I will go into the song, I'll make sure I'll have the first chunk memorized, I'll play it, then I'll pause, I'll memorize the next chunk, I'll unpause, I'll go execute that, and then final chunk, I'll memorize and execute. And yeah, okay, pausing mid-FC is not terrific, and I don't like to do it much, but it's less about getting the score then, and more just memorizing the path because now you're executing it in the game so that's an association to help you remember it so once you've done that then i'll do a second run trying to not look at my notes at all and usually then i'll get it if it's a normal length song if it's something like in l which has 19 activations then i'll have to do a few repetitions of this pausing process before i memorize the path and also another thing you can do if you try, want to try and get a first try but not pause is you can look over to the side and from your peripheral vision kind of quickly glance and see what you've written down and that's a bit tricky and it takes some getting used to but for a lot of songs it'll be like a, a sustain you can quickly peek over and like oh right those are my next two or three activations and over time you'll get better at doing that if it's the kind of thing you care to do and lastly a word about tournaments because so this method is great for just memorizing a path, doing a few runs, getting a story you're happy with, and then moving on, which I've done a lot of, given I've I've done this with like over 5,000 paths over the years, probably. But what about when you want to retain a path for longer, like if you're doing a tournament and you've got to remember 12 plus paths, say? Well then, what I like to do is, I'll do this process for a few songs, and then I'll call it quits and tourney practice for the day. Or at least memorizing paths, and then the next day I'll do the next a next set of songs, and then I'll do like the final group of songs the third day, and then after that, I will um, I won't have rem I won't have perfectly remembered everything from the first day or two, but it'll be a, it'll be a case of well I'll go over all of them again, and then the second time will usually help it stick, and then every now and then I'll just do a playthrough of every single song to make sure everything is stuck, and if not, well I'll quickly look at my notes again and see what I'm forgetting and what it needs to be. I'm probably using this term wrong, but it's a bit like spaced repetition where you start repeating things 
a lot and then over time you space out the repetitions and that helps you with remembering things so that's basically what i do for tournament songs and so even though 12 paths might sound like a lot i very very rarely have any problems with memorizing those paths by like the middle of the week it's it just comes down to whether i've actually played the game those days and you know i'm not doing long play sessions either so even if you've got a job or something uh unless you've got something else going on you'll you'll fit in the time to do that but anyway um so hopefully this is helpful and it's given you some ideas on how to remember paths take care <laughs>